from her head reaching the clouds to her feet firmly planted on the ground, welcome to There's Always Hope. I'm Ralph Hipp here at the world famous Topeka Zoo with the inspiring and heartwarming story of this baby giraffe born last summer. She's really turned Topekans hearts around toward this place. And over the next half hour, you'll find out more than just in our newscasts about the incredible veterinary care that Hope has received. Let's begin though at the start and show you some baby videos of when Hope was born here to her mom Dolly, July 11th. Our observer in Hope's second week of her young life is K-State reporter and 13 News intern Stephanie Carr. Hope is eight days old now. The newborn giraffe named Hope spends most of her time being watched by visitors at the Topeka Zoo. But those aren't the only people keeping an eye on her. We're still very closely monitoring her condition. She's literally on a day-to-day -day, uh, evaluation. Her condition is hyperflex tendons in her rear hooves. It's a birth defect that has been seen in 12 of 40 giraffes this year in North America. And these were literally curved back almost at right angles. Hope is now in her second set of casts that will help straighten her joints. As everything was straightened out, the stress of straightening it out was felt also all the way up here. To relieve that stress, Hope has physical therapy twice a day. Once Hope's mom, Dolly, is inside, the staff heads out to begin. We're going to get her up, okay. and we'll move her more out this way. As Hope got up and ran, the staff's hope also went up. That's actually a really, really good sign. As Hope grows physically, so does her spirit. At 12 days old, she now runs away from zoo staff. We've got one keeper down out there, successful giraffe capture. Day 12 proved to be a big one for Hope. What are you hoping to see from Hope? What I'm looking for is to make sure I have no complications from the cast. And second, I'm hoping that I'm seeing the front tendons, the extensor tendons, are a little looser. For the safety of all involved, Hope was given a sedative, then led into the van. Staff monitored her carefully yep, because it was her first time for both of those. Neck. Yep, she can stand. Support her neck. Keepers helped Hope stand while the veterinary staff took x-rays. Then it was time for the big moment. Staff comforted the frightened giraffe while Kamer cut the casts in half. When they finally came off, there was good news. Um, this is a great thing, but we had some, we've got some cuts from the cast saw that we're going to fix. We had zero complications. After treating the cuts, Kamer patted Hope's legs, placed the cast pieces back together, and wrapped them in a special tape. Because the traditional treatment is working at this point, the veterinarians decided that Hope will not have the surgery on her tendons. I do believe that it probably will get better, short of having any complications. When Hope returned to the yard, her mother Dolly was waiting for her right inside the gate. Stephanie Carr, 13 News. Thank you very much, Stephanie. In this blog, Twitter, and Facebook world of ours, it didn't take any time at all for Hope the Baby Giraffe to become a major media celebrity. She has her own Facebook page through the zoo where you can befriend her. I already have, and you can too. In late August, NBC's Sunday Today Show invited people to come and join Brendan Wiley for a live interview on the national broadcast. Look how many people showed up on a Sunday morning at 6.30 to be there live to see Hope international debut. Brandon Wiley did a fantastic job of explaining Hope's story and there were the amazing signs that the Today Show fans always hold up. By September 1st, CBS Early Show veterinarian Dr. Debbie Turner Bell got into the act, bringing a crew of five to not only have a live interview with Brandon, no, she came to observe a procedure and actually be a part of it. Afterwards, she told us how impressed she was by the veterinary care that Hope is receiving here. I think Dr. Kamer is doing a fabulous job. Her hoof and her foot looks wonderful under the, under the bandage and under the, the cast and the wrapping. And just look at her. She's standing, she's walking, which is what we wanted. Um, there's some great medicine going on here, and uh, Dr. Kamer is doing a fabulous job. Good for him and good for the Topeka Zoo. And what are Dr. Kamer and his helpers actually doing? Are they putting sandals on her hooves? We have to actually peel that off, cut this thing off the bottom, and then we have to reshape the foot. We have to clean the foot. It's been spent four weeks inside of a shoe and actually therefore builds up debris that we have to clean. 
we file the foot, we sand the foot, prepare it then to take on the new cemented prosthetic shoe. I'm a veterinarian by education, so I've seen a lot of neat animal stories, but this has never been done on a giraffe, and so that makes it exciting, it makes it intriguing, it's a little bit risky, and it's a lot of fun to cover. And abraded. So Dr. Turner Bell got to help for the procedure. Yeah, that's the best part of it. Um, you know, the average reporter going into a situation like this can't get nowhere near the animal. Because I'm a veterinarian, I can get in there and actually assist. And I can tell you that this baby is strong. When, when she would pull and kick, I mean, you felt the full force of her 210 pounds or so. I'm amazed at how strong she is. And with all that video, where was she off to next? Back to New York, put this story together on the early show, so be sure and tune in. CBS early show producer Arden Fari is helping Dr. Bell put her segment together. How did they find out about Hope in the first place? Well, we saw the story of Hope and we thought it, uh, it's, it, it's just a great story. I mean, you look at this giraffe and, and she's adorable and also you, you look at the science and it's somewhat of a, a first. I mean, you, you, this procedure has never been done before and uh, we wanted to see it happen. So we were, we were lucky to have Debbie, who's a veterinarian, come out and, uh, and tell this story. You know, it's crowded in there and there's a lot of people holding back uh, hope and, and, and making sure she stays where she needs to be. But, you know, to be honest, uh, this, was, this was a photographer's dream, so to speak. I mean, you got a lot of visuals with this story, with the giraffes, with the procedure, um, you know, all sorts of good pictures here. I thought, you know, it was, it was really cool. Uh, I, I've obviously never seen anything like this because this is the first time this has been done. Um, but, you know, you, you, you look at this and, and it looks like, uh, you know, it, it could have been surgery on a, on a person. It was really advanced and they, they wrapped their leg just like they would a, a broken arm or a broken leg. So it's pretty cool. It's so important for us as humans to be aware of the preciousness of these wild animals. I mean, this is an exotic, majestic, beautiful animal. And to have science and technology be able to step in and hopefully preserve her life is just fabulous. This is what zoos are about. This is what veterinarians are about. And uh, it's just really exciting. Hope has been getting national attention for the Topeka Zoo and the amazing care she has received. And in this latest edition of Time for Kids, look on the back here. There's even a picture of Hope with Hope for Hope as the headline there and school children all around the nation will be receiving this magazine and this bit of information about hope. We'll be back with more of our special, There's Always Hope, right after this break. Welcome back to more of our special, There's Always Hope, as we chronicle this amazing, heartwarming story of Hope the Baby Giraffe. This is a guy who has done so much work to make sure that her hooves and her feet are in the right place, and after her hoof deformity when she was born a little over two months ago, Dr. Joe Kamer. Dr. Kamer, you let us just watch the medical procedure. It's been about 10 days now since Dr. Bell was here. You cleaned those dressings. Explain more of what you did here with us today. Well, today we were doing kind of a standard uh, evaluation and leg wrap change. And she has wraps that we keep on her legs uh, sometimes for up to seven to 10 days. And of course, these become soiled and wet and we actually have a wound that we've been treating on her right rear leg uh, since within a couple of weeks after we started treatment she got an injury and we've been treating that and so we have to evaluate that at least once a week so today what you saw was us removing uh, leg wraps we had her in a standing restraint uh, we've used sedatives on her when she was a little bit smaller uh, you can see that she's pretty powerful and that she uh, really puts up a, a little bit of a fight. Uh, but today what we were able to do is get the wraps off, evaluate her wound, treat her wound with a special product called A-Cell, which is actually the lining from a, a pig's bladder. Uh, so we can try to regrow some skin over this uh, wound that's actually getting better. Uh, we actually also evaluate the shoe that, we have actually, that we've glued on the bottom of her foot. And we need to make sure that the shoe is staying on and not becoming loose, does not have excessive wear. And so that's what basically we were doing today. Yeah, Dr. Kamer, I had described these a minute ago as sandals for her hooves. Did you design these sandals that she's wearing? I designed this off of impressions from her feet that we did within the first two weeks of life. We knew that the first three weeks we put hard casts on her. 
This was basically to help straighten the leg and to stretch out these front tendons, the extensor tendons, which were too tight. They were bent forward. Yes. And those were like a spring. We had determined early that we may end up doing a surgery to cut those tendons to relax that, but we were able to not have to do surgery because we were able to get those to stretch in about a three week period with hard casts. This condition, however, really involves the back tendons, the flexor tendons. They are what support the animal. They're very stretched and they're too loose. Keeping them in a hard cast will not correct that problem. It will not allow the body to uh, feel the stress on those tendons and to tighten and grow. So the treatment for that condition is adding an extension to the heel, and this has been done in horses and uh, generally is with a horseshoe. Of course, we're dealing with a different type of an animal who is more like a cow who has two toes and is a cloven foot animal. So basically, I had to come up with a scenario where we could have an extended heel and use a, uh, and, and develop a shoe that would fit. Doc, we really haven't been over much of this. Can you go back to the beginning and describe the tendon deformity that Hope was born with? Explain that to us a little more. When she was born, she was born with a severe condition that would make it so that she couldn't walk. Um, looking at it for the first time, it was um, very striking to see, um, disturbing almost. Uh, we knew that uh, she couldn't survive this way. And so we basically quickly started putting together plans and literally within hours, you know, started her treatment. What is the name of the deformity that she was born with? It, it is, it's extremely rare, isn't it? It is rare but not uncommon, it does occur in hoof stock, and it's called hyperextension of the fetlock joint. And that means her joint bends forward completely in the wrong direction, about 180 degrees, and her toe pointed up in the air. There is so much geometry and physics involved in healing Hope. Every time they take off the dressings, Dr. Kamer has to measure the angle that her feet are pointing in that particular week. And for the physics, really with a giraffe treatment, all we have to go by are people's feet or calves and cow's hooves to get the right physiology and get the right placement of those hooves so she can walk normally. There's lots of physics and then there's lots of study been done by myself and, and people prior. This being a large hoof stock animal, we go to the only data available. There's nothing on the giraffe that we can really find that's definitely in the literature. Um, this condition has occurred we know in 13 out of the last 40 births of giraffes uh, in the country the condition does happen in horses and there is reported condition the same condition occurring in cattle uh, we just simply know that the treatment protocol for the equine is in place and it has uh, a decent prognosis the problem is now taking all of that and putting it into a giraffe, which is a totally different animal, and making it happen. And so, uh, uh, essentially, we had to design a shoe that would fit. We now know that this shoe being on keeps her toe flat on the ground. Without it, her toe will point straight up in the air. It gives her the time that she needs for those tendons in the back to, as she grows, to strengthen and tighten, and hopefully that fetlock joint will kind of come up. Uh, a common term in the uh, equine world is called dropped fetlock, and we call it hyperextension of the fetlock. Yeah. We had to come up with a wrap that would wrap around the foot uh, to hold this on in addition to gluing on the bottom. Um, this product is also used in horses for hoof repair, and it is a product called Spectra or polyethylene mesh, which is um, a product that's very tough and durable. It's used in body armor for soldiers. And this, I think, is the key uh, to helping keep these shoes on. And so that's basically uh, the science involved with the, bottom, with the shoe. Coming up next, the emotional part of Hope's treatment and how that treatment has changed our lives. And what caught me so off guard by all of this was the huge amount of compassion that was surrounding this little animal that was literally less than two hours old. When There's Always Hope continues in a moment. Brendan Wiley was only the zoo director in Topeka for six weeks when Hope was born in the middle of July. 
it may well turn out to be a defining point in his career. You know, the first time that I laid eyes on Hope was truly, uh, truly a turning point for me here. The first time I saw Hope was very much different than the other staff here. Got to the zoo half hour after she was born, and there was Hope laying on the ground, surrounded by a group of people. This condition that she's dealing with, uh, she had a sibling that did not survive from this condition. So this was something that we'd talked about leading up to this birth. And when I got here and what I saw was this group of people surrounding this little baby giraffe laying on the ground. And what you could see in their eyes was here's a giraffe that is up against pretty big odds and probably not a good outcome. But at the same time, what you could see in these people and what you could see in their hearts was here's a little baby giraffe that's literally going to get every opportunity that we can give it to survive. And from day one, from hour one, uh, mom has taken exceptionally good care of this little baby. And this little baby has had a huge will to not only just survive, but that huge will to want to be a, want to be a giraffe, a normal giraffe. Um, she's always wanted to be with mom. She wants to do what mom does. Uh, it's just been an incredible experience to see her grow and get stronger and deal with this condition. But at the same time, uh, she's getting treatment that allows her to live like a normal giraffe. She can walk and she can run and she can move her joints the way um, joints should be moved because of this treatment that she's getting. And if this technique that we're using here in Topeka at the Topeka Zoological Park can help benefit other giraffe born at other zoos, whether it's in this country or around the world, to overcome uh, this abnormality, then that is what this partnership is all about. During our conversation, Brendan Wiley and I talked about the earlier storyline from the Topeka Zoo. So many stories earlier on about animals dying there, accidentally or through something that had happened at the zoo. While now, since he's been here, the storyline from Topeka has been life-affirming about young animals being born and thriving and surviving. Is he happy about the change of the storyline? We're very happy with that story and the stories that we're able to tell. Uh, we know that with the very nature of our business and what we do, that um, not all of our stories will always have happy endings. But what we do want is the community to feel like they are a part of every one of those stories. And that this is a true community resource that not only belongs to the community, but has that essence of what this great Topekan community is all about. Brendan mentioned Vision, the new little baby hippo, who was named by a banking corporation. They won the naming rights in an auction. How was Hope named? Was it done the same way? The way this little baby giraffe got her name is a little unique in itself. Uh, we had every intention of actually having some sort of community naming contest with this baby animal. And after she was born and we saw what the start of her life would be like and what she was going to have to deal with. It was more or less unspoken that this may not be the right opportunity for a community naming process. To this day, I don't know who coined that name. I almost don't want to know. The name is so perfect and has captured so much of the spirit, not only of what is occurring from day to day here at the zoo, but also now with the community attitude about our zoo that uh, she has become just a perfect symbol for what it is we want to achieve. There is always hope. Keep following Hope's amazing story on 13 News as we follow her progress. I want to thank you so much and thank Brendan Wiley and Dr. Joe Kamer for being my guests, along with CBS's Dr. Debbie Turner-Bell for our show. Thank you for joining us for There's Always Hope. Have a good night. <laughs>